mobile forensics. Digital forensics on mobile devices and cell phones has been a growing field over the last two decades. In many cases, mobile devices carry much more useful evidence that can be used, especially in the case of law enforcement. Mobile devices are filled with valuable information such as contacts, text messages, GPS data, photos and videos, metadata, network data, application data, and other personally identifiable information that can be used for analysis. Mobile devices generally offer three primary avenues of evidence collection, which include mobile networks, operating systems, and hardware data. Additionally, there may also be access to cloud data and data stored on various apps. Each of these categories is filled with valuable information that can be used to identify whether or not an individual took part in a crime or whether or not a mobile device was compromised in a business meeting. Tablets, PDAs, smartwatches, and wearable tech are other devices that can also be used for mobile forensics. Each of these devices usually blends together network forensics, cloud forensics, and computer forensics. As modern mobile technology becomes more interconnected, this will only become more prevalent. Advantages of Mobile Forensics as mobile and wearable technology becomes more widely used and accepted by society, the digital footprint of each individual continues to grow. In the beginning, digital forensics just involved physical computers and maybe laptops. These days, technology is everywhere, and all of it has a story to tell about its user. For example, most people in the modern world have some type of smartphone with dozens of apps and functions that store, transmit, and process data. This includes GPS data, internet activity, call records, text messages, contacts, social media apps, delivery apps, and the list goes on. Each of these apps and functions on the device provide a wide range of data that can be used to identify an individual, their patterns, historical activities, and to predict their future actions. On one hand, this data and technological functionality provides a lot of convenience to users by allowing them to seamlessly make purchases, order a ride share, communicate, and so on. However, this convenience comes at a price, which is the privacy and security of an individual and their data. Much of the data on our devices that is stored and used by third parties can be accessed by law enforcement, company employees, and other service providers. Much of this information is metadata and log data, which can be used in many cases to catch criminals. For example, metadata in the form of geotags found in photos posted online have been used in numerous cases by law enforcement to catch individuals who have committed crimes. Disadvantages of Mobile Forensics One of the biggest disadvantages of mobile forensics from the investigative standpoint is that many service providers are not willing to jeopardize users' privacy for law enforcement. In some cases, they may not even be able to break into an encrypted device or file themselves. In many cases, apps that store their data outside of the jurisdiction of the crime may not be accessible or will require more hurdles to overcome in order to access the data. By this time, evidence could have been destroyed and criminal activity may no longer be provable in court. Additionally, Mobile devices are notoriously difficult to break into and may not be accessible by digital forensics investigators even when using advanced tools such as Celebrite. This would require investigators to use other methods to crack the password or encryption such as fingerprint or face scan. In some cases, the suspect may be willing to cooperate and will provide a method to unlock the device, or law enforcement may use social engineering to break in. Types of data collected As mentioned in the overview, investigators use three primary evidence tapes when analyzing mobile devices. These are mobile networks, operating systems, and hardware data each of which provide different data and together create a better picture to help investigators make conclusions about the owner of the device, their associates, and their activity. SIM cards. The subscriber identity module, SIM card, 
is a tiny microprocessor that is designed to connect a mobile device to the cellular carrier associated with the device. This allows the mobile device to operate properly by performing phone calls, sending text messages, and accessing cellular networks. There are several types of SIM cards on the market, with the most common being the Nano SIM that is used in most modern devices. Many phones are also equipped with an eSIM, which is where the SIM card is built into the device and is electronically activated. This allows users to have dual SIM capability, which is a feature that allows for two separate phone numbers on one device. SIM cards have a hierarchical file system, which include elementary files, EF, GSM, DCS-1800, and Telcom, which all contain network data such as International Mobile Subscriber Identity, IMSI, which all contain network data such as International Mobile Subscriber Identity, IMSI, information. There are various hardware and software tools that can be used to extract data from SIM cards, which can be helpful in various investigations. Mobile Network Data The most popular mobile networks are GSM, Edge, UMTS, 4G LTE, IDEN. Investigating forensic data from each of these networks can reveal information about the user of the mobile device. This data can provide connection logs that can be associated to certain cell carriers, geographic location, device type, and other relevant information. Mobile Operating Systems The two primary mobile operating systems on modern phones are Apple iOS and Google's Android OS. Android is a Linux-based open-source platform that provides terminal-level access for routing this device. This can open up the device for better data extraction in a forensic environment. Apple iOS is a Unix-based operating system that is much more restrictive in terms of accessibility. iOS is used in Apple phones, iPads, and other devices which, if properly handled, can provide a large amount of forensic data. Data extraction methods for mobile devices include brute force, logical acquisition, file system acquisition, and physical hardware acquisition. As mentioned before, the benefit of conducting digital forensics on mobile devices is that they provide a wider range of data as opposed to most computers. This includes cellular network data, application data, operating system data, and other forms of data common to information systems. Examples of Mobile Forensics In 2009, an individual illegally living in the United Kingdom was arrested while he was planning to conduct a terrorist attack. The individual had secured numerous bomb-making tools such as detonators, ammunition, and several guides on how to build explosives, including the Hezbollah Military Instructions Manual and Mobile Detonators. This individual seemed to live a quiet and pleasant life and didn't draw attention to himself. However, behind the scenes he was planning something terrible. This individual was under scrutiny by the Northwest Counterterrorism Unit due to a multitude of suspicious internet downloads such as the ones mentioned above. Upon further investigation of his devices, he was later convicted of plotting to conduct terrorism. In 2016, a man used the online marketplace app OfferUp to conduct a robbery of two other men at gunpoint. During the robbery, something went wrong, and one of the victims was shot and killed. During the investigation, law enforcement investigators were able to connect the OfferUp account with a Facebook account. The Facebook account had photos of the suspect and other amplifying information, such as the photo of a bracelet owned by the suspect that was found at the crime scene. This information is what allowed law enforcement to later find and arrest the individual in question.